The relays of Warframe are the central hub for the game's important access points and NPC storefronts. Depending on your platform, the active relays will vary. On PC, your relays are located on Mercury, Earth, Saturn, and Pluto. PlayStation 4, your relays are Mercury, Earth, Saturn, and Eris. Xbox One, your relays are on Venus, Earth, Europa, and Pluto. And for Nintendo Switch, your relays can be found on Mercury, Venus, Europa, and Eris. Access to these relays can be found on the star chart by going to the indicator on their respective planets. However, access to each of these relays are tied to your mastery rank. With the Mercury relay of Lorunda, the Venus relay of Vespa, and the Earth relay of Strata having no mastery rank restriction, which means new players can access the relay when they can be accessed from the star chart. The Saturn Relay of Kronia and the Europa Relay of Leonov, on the other hand, require the player to be at least Mastery Rank 4 to enter. Finally, the Relay of Kuiper on Eris and the Pluto Relay of Orcus require players to be at least Mastery Rank 8. The following section of this video will be covering the layout and vendors within the original relays. So the following section will not apply to the Xbox One and PC variants of the Strata Relay on Earth or the PlayStation 4 Lorunda Relay on Mercury. Once gaining access to the relay and entering, the player can move from the landing platform into the concourse. Here the player will see a statue of Rhino and multiple exits. In the concourse, there will also be two terminals that the player can access. These two terminals allow players to trade their prime parts for ducats which is a resource needed to purchase items from the fortnightly vendor, Barrow Kateer. Barrow Kateer appears every two weeks from his last visit and appears just below the middle stairs on the right-hand side of the pillar in the concourse. If you are unsure on when Barrow Kateer will appear next or when he leaves, you can consult the ducket terminal. Projected upon it will be the time until his next visit, and if he is already around, the time until he leaves. The concourse also houses a unique viewing screen that showcases the usernames of all players who purchase the Grandmaster tier from the Founder program. This screen is located directly above Barracatier and can be accessed by jumping and bullet jumping your way to the top. Moving out from the left door or the right door, in the concourse we enter the left and right wing. Each wing houses three out of the six syndicates of the game, with the syndicate system being made available to players after they reach Mastery Rank 3. Within the left wing you'll find the new Loka, Perrin Sequence, and Red Veil, and in the right wing you'll find the Arbiters of Hexus, Cephalon Suda, and the Steel Meridian. Each syndicate has their own unique vendor within their rooms, for players to deposit syndicate medallions which they can gather by running syndicate missions. All of these vendors are located on the right hand side of these rooms when entering. Each of the syndicate leaders are also located within these rooms. The new Loka leader is the NPC in the center of the water. The parent sequence can be found in the middle right of the room. The leader of the Red Veil is at the back of the room, below the stairs and behind that burning tree. The Steel Meridian is at the back of the room behind the boxes. Cephalon Suda is at the back of the room behind their syndicate icon. And the Arbiters of Hexus are in the back of their room. As of recording this video, two of the six syndicates have an extra vendor. The Arbiters of Hexus have the Arbitration Vendor, who is on the left side of their room, and he does offer rewards once players have completed every node on the star chart and have earned enough Vitus Essence from the Arbitration game mode. The second vendor is within the Cephalon Suda room on the left hand side, and this allows players to replay the final section of the Octavia's Anthem quest as a time trial in hopes of being placed on the leaderboard. After entering into the left wing on your left, and the right wing on your right, you will see a subsection with a window. In this subsection, the player can interact with the pulsing pads that will make them kneel. Or if the player is an Octavia, they can play their manticord music by using a dance emote. The area in which Octavia can do this throughout the game are indicated by the purple graphic on your screen. Now entering through the main stairs in the concourse will conjoin with the left and right wing and take you into the north wing. The North Wing is the House of Teshin's Conclave on the left hand side, and the Navigation Room on the right. When entering the Conclave Room you will see a terminal that shows your remaining standing for the day for Conclave, and upon interacting with it you can start any of the PvP game types for the game. The terminal is also available in your Orbiter. Teshin is also located at the top of the stairs in this room, and he is your vendor for the Conclave Syndicate, where you can purchase gear, mods, and cosmetics. 
Within the navigation room, interacting with the pulsing platform's room will open up the star chart, and interacting with the consoles will allow the player to swap between their loadouts. Returning to the north wing, there are two elevators. After ascending through one of them, you will find yourself on the second floor of the north wing. The left door will take you to Darbo's shop, where you can view and purchase his daily deals, which do reset every 24 hours. Once a week, you will also be able to interact with Darbo to start the Help Clem mission that after completion will give you a Clem Spectre. However, if you take the right door, you will enter Sanctuary. Heading right after entering is the ramp of the Mastery Rank Test, where the player can replay old Mastery Rank Tests, practice for their next test, or simply start the next test when they are ready. When you head forward when entering Sanctuary, you will be greeted by Cephalon Samaris. When you interact with him, you can choose to ask for targets to stand for him and earn Samaris standing. You'll also be able to ask to run a practice simulation where you can learn how to capture Samaras targets, and you'll also have the option to learn more about Sanctuary Onslaught, which is another game mode. On the back left of this room, you can find the research terminal that has a number of enemy types that the player can select, and then go out into the world and scan to reveal some lore, and earn some Samaras standing. On the back right of the room, you will find Samaras' offerings, where you can purchase scanners, mods, widgets, cosmetics, weapons, and terminals for the Simulacrum, or minigames with Samara standing. If the player does purchase the Simulacrum access key, it can be used and accessed by interacting with the blue glow on the left hand side when entering Sanctuary. Doing so will take you to the Simulacrum, which is a simulation room. If you need more information about the Simulacrum itself, I do have a video covering it on my channel. Now that does conclude all the vendors in the relay. However, in 2015, Operation Eyes of Blight was a major event for Warframe that was live, where the Grenier were attacking the relays of Warframe. The player base on each console had the ability to defend the relays by running Fomorian Arcwing sabotage missions, which would lower the health of the attacking Fomorian. At the end of the event, there were exactly three relays left on each of the game's platforms, which is why you do see some crumbled relays when you're viewing some of the planets on the star chart. In 2018, another operation was titled The Pyrus Project, where a player had to run a number of missions and gather new resources to rebuild one of the destroyed relays. For PC and Xbox One, it was the Strata Relay on Earth, and for PlayStation 4, it was the Lorunda Relay on Mercury. These rebuilt relays have a new aesthetic compared to the originals, and they also have a different layout. The first noticeable difference is that the relay features a red paint job and flaming decorations. The locations of the aforementioned vendors have also changed. Upon entering, you'll enter the north wing that hosts two elevators. Taking the elevator down, you will find the navigation room to the left and the sanctuary to the right when you look back from where you came. Following the hallway from going down on the elevators, you will come to an intersection. On the left, you will find Darbo's shop, and on the right, you will find Teshin and the Conclave. Taking the elevator back up, you will come to the main floor. Just like the original relays, wings do house the syndicates. On the left, you will find the Steel Meridian, Cephalon Suda, and Arbitus of Hexus, and on the right, you will find the Red Veil, Perrin Sequence, and New Loka. In the wings on this relay, there are no windows, so there is no viewing platform where the player can kneel. However, the option for Octavia to use her dancing emote and play her manticored music is still available. When you enter the concourse through any of the doors, you'll find the new aesthetic in full force with a flaming ember statue and molten ground. Barricadier will also appear in front of this ember statue when his rotation on the relay comes around. As for the Ducket Kiosk, they are located against the window and just behind the Ember Statue. There are three available on this relay. You can also find the kneeling emote pads above these kiosks on their own platform. And as of recording this video, there is no Grandmaster Founder Terminal on the new relay. There is also a major topic to be had about the relays themselves. The relays now have two reoccurring events tied to them that are activated once their progress bar completes on the invasion screen in the world state window. The bar on the invasion screen does increase based on how many invasions get completed and which factions the players chose to side on. These reoccurring events are the Fomorian Sabotage Mission, that is a play down variation of Eyes of Light, and the Razorback Armada that was introduced in Tactical Alert Divine Will. If the Razorback or Fomorians are not destroyed when the event timer reaches zero, 
the relay that they were attacking will be destroyed. However, it has been widely documented that the reoccurring events have a preset progression system to stop this from happening when DE does not intend for a relay to be destroyed. Just like the simulacrum, you can find more information about the two reoccurring events in their own videos. That concludes this video. If I left any information out, make sure to put it in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.